Welcome back. I'm Marlo Blue, and you're listening to Open Journal, a community spotlight portion of 90.1 FM Community Radio. Today's show is an interview with artist and director Julian Schnabel, talking about his 2010 film, Miral, and the ongoing Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Before the break, I was asking Julian about the importance of tackling the subject matter now. I think that the film brings these questions up, uh, many questions up, and I think it's the kind of film that everybody should see, and they can use it as a vessel in a way, because I think it really opens up a dialogue, and that's what's been happening. So in that, in that context, I think it's been very, very successful. I got a wonderful call from Carl Reiner this morning, who said to me that uh, he just saw the movie with his son. He thought it was one of the best films he's seen this year, and certainly the most important movie that he'd seen in years, uh, and and that he felt that everyone should see it. And he's and I love it because he's 89 years old and he's Jewish and he's very bright. And he's somebody that my mother had a lot of respect for. You know who Carl Reiner is, yes? Oh yes, I do, absolutely, and and that's a great compliment. Uh, and so I, I think it's, a, you know, people, and he said he was in the movie theater and people are just engaged in the film every moment and they're moved. And, and he was, he said, call me if you want to be lauding, <laughs> lauding. And he gave me his telephone number. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Uh, so, I mean, give me, give me Carl Reiner instead of Roger Ebert any day. <laughs> I mean, you know, and, uh. So, you know, I had beautiful, so what I decided to do was get quotes from all of these actors and directors and put them on the uh, these uh, kind of foam core boards where they usually have reviews. And you have Johnny Depp saying, uh, go see this film that this takes you to a place where, uh, and, and, and I, I don't want to start quoting what all these people said, but very, very beautiful uh, and inspiring things, and and I'm pretty happy with the response to this. I mean, I don't think it would have been any other way. It's mm-hmm. too lodged in in a in in a problem that needs to be, you know, it's like a an abscess that needs to be um, lanced, and that's and that's painful, but it's uh, it's it's useful. What do you have to say to people who insist that there is only one right side and answer to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Well, the right side is peace. Isn't that the right side? I mean, the right side is we're all human beings. And uh, we can't make believe that you build a wall somewhere and people that are on the other side of it don't exist. Mm -hmm. And then you wonder why you don't have security in your own country. And you're occupying somebody else's country. So uh, I think that's a, there's not one simple answer. The answer is that instead of making people your enemy, you make them your partners and you work together as people, as human beings. And, uh, and I think that the smart people on both sides are doing that. Julian, the recent assassination of Giuliano Mercamis the, highlights the dangers of being an activist in the Middle East. Why did you choose to film on location in the midst of the conflict? Well, I mean, the movie had to be authentic. I couldn't do it any other way. I'm not the kind of person that could go and make a movie in Los Angeles and make believe that it's uh, it's just not that kind of thing. I actually shot, I mean, Rula's mother was raped in a house in Halisa. I actually shot the, the scene in the same house where it happened. I shot also where the at where the orphans were brought to the Husseini home, and I mean, and I worked with it, with Palestinians and and with Israelis, and they all worked together, and and it was a kind of a an amazing thing, uh, and I think that's like Sidney Lumet used to say that New York City was a, part, a character in his films. I think very much so. The landscape is a big part of this movie. Mm-hmm. And and when you see the movie, I mean, you will see how beautiful it is. Now, in, uh, some they, of your previous... they usually don't talk to people if they haven't seen the movie. <laughs> but in this particular case, I'll talk to anybody because I really believe that people should see the film, and and uh, and it's I, and I do believe that a movie can be educational and poetic at the same time. 
think Frida Pinto is great in it also. Lovely. Now, um, now I mean, you know, she was criticized for being an Indian person. I mean, why in the hell wouldn't I hire her to play a role just because she's an Indian person? If you saw Rula, they looked like they're sisters. Did um, you actually grew up and spent some time in South Texas? Did any of that actually? When I was when I was fifteen, my parents moved from Brooklyn, New York, to Brownsville, Texas. How did that affect your later work? Well, I think it was the best thing that ever happened to me moving to Texas. I just changed my whole concept of the landscape and also the proximity to Mexico was very, very important. I started surfing down there when I was 15 and then drove across Mexico, uh, and that's impressive. I mean, it's a, quite a country, and to drive from Brownsville to Monterrey and then through uh, Zacatecas to San Luis Potosí, Guadalajara, to the Pacific Coast and drive down from San Blas or Mazatlan all the way to the Isthmus and Tehuantepec. I mean, I've seen a lot of Mexico, and that had a big effect on my art also. I mean, Mexican painting, mural painting, and just um, there's a time warp there. It's very, very different than growing up in the sort of... Uh, um, the cultural uh, paradigm of, of New York City and Brooklyn. So I think that that uh, dissonance and the difference between those two places had a big impact on my concept of what being an artist was or being or the way of seeing the world. Mm. And in fact, when I think of Jerusalem, East Jerusalem, West Jerusalem, it's more like Brownsville, Texas, than it is like New York City. Hmm. It's a small town. Hmm. Um, is this how you envisioned your life? Um, I know that's personal, and I'm sorry, but... Um, look, I mean, envision my life. You mean uh, that I was going to be an artist? Yes. Uh, yeah, I never was anything else. I mean, I guess I started making things when I was pretty young. I was, my sister and brother were much older, so I spent a lot of time by myself, and um, that was something that I like to do, and ultimately, uh, yeah, making art is a great privilege, and I guess the thing I like to do most is paint. Do you have an inner editor, and how does that interact with the commercial world? Oh, well, I don't really care about, you know, I, I've made different movies. I never cared or tried to make the movies to the lowest common denominator or trying to just make something that was popular. I I always made films about people that I thought uh, needed a voice or were trying to communicate something and they were having a difficulty doing that, so... If you look at all the films I've made, it's usually about that. And uh, and I really was lucky enough that, I mean, I, I, I am self-employed and I live from selling my paintings, not from making movies, so I don't have to accept a job as a filmmaker just because I want to feed my family. Mm. So I've picked what I wanted to do. I make them when I feel like it, and... And um, and I have enough time to do both, really. And now that I'm sort of like a crop rotator, you know, I plant, plant potatoes for a while and then carrots. <laughs> so, so now, um, now I don't think I'll make a movie for a while, and I'm I'm just painting. I'm gonna have a big show at the. Correa Museum in Venice during the Biennale this year of about 40 paintings. Piazza San Marco. Fabulous. Just fabulous. Well, thank you so much. That's that's really all we have time for. I, we appreciate it. Well, I appreciate it, too. Morales stars Frida Pinto, best known in the West as the star of Slumdog Millionaire, Hayam Abbas, Yasmin El Masri, and Omar Metwadi. For more information on Hind Husseini's Dal El Tifel School and Orphanage, 
you can go to www.dearyassin.org. That's D E I R Y A S S I N.org. Thank you for joining us for today's Open Journal. A special thanks to today's Open Journal staff, Laura Slavin, and of course, Program Director Ernesto Aguiar. You are listening to KPFT 90.1 FM in Houston.